This morning on Inside Kansas Politics. First, I wanted to talk about the ad. Rocky Mountain oysters are a real delicacy, but castration is for cattle. Not our kids. Self-proclaimed cowboy and congressional candidate Sean Tiffany is in the hot seat. I'm saying what most folks are thinking. In a one-on-one interview, he's speaking out on controversial issues. Would you advocate for then maybe a blanket ban on the federal level of gender transitioning for minors? Absolutely. His top priorities. It's a national security issue and it's a humanitarian crisis. And what it means to be conservative. Would you call yourself a true conservative and what does that mean to you? And later on. A Democrat also vying for District 2 is blasted by her own party. Why her views on transgender athletes are taking heat. From the Kansas State Capitol, this is Inside Kansas Politics. If you're taking a look inside Kansas politics, welcome in. I'm Rebecca Chung. We're starting off with Cowboy for Congress Sean Tiffany in the hot seat this morning. He was the first to release ads in the District 2 race, one reigniting the debate surrounding gender transitioning for minors. It's the first thing I asked about in a one-on-one interview. First, I wanted to talk about the ad because you yep. had a few running on air. Uh, one that stands out was your first one where you say, quote, Rocky Mountain oysters are a real delicacy, but castration is for cattle, not our kids. Now, these words, pretty provocative, right? Re- reigniting the conversation surrounding gender transitioning for minors. Um, these are some choice words as well, drawing the parallel between a part of the cattle that's usually mm-hmm. eaten and then also a similar part of on a child. So would you change anything about the wording here or phrasing about your delivery? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, the ads were bold intentionally for a couple different reasons. One, uh, to just get people's attention. And frankly, it has worked. Uh, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, people appreciate the fact that I'm saying what most folks are thinking. Now, has it upset some folks? Absolutely. Uh, but the reality is there is zero science to pr- prove that these uh, puberty blockers, transition sh- surgeries uh, should be done. It's uh, irresponsible to be doing these things in minors. And, you know, my goal is just to protect children, at least until they're 18 years old and mature enough to make a decision for themselves. Okay, so no redo on that. You wouldn't change anything? No, not at all. Not at all. Like I said, uh, people are overwhelmingly supportive of that. Uh, Every age, every demographic, whether I'm walking a parade or filling up with fuel in some random town, uh, I'm getting comments and it's overwhelmingly positive. Okay. Now, speaking of ads, your other political ad received some backlash from a Republican political blocker, Matt Foldy. He accused your campaign of copying an ad that ran for Senator John Cornyn in 2008. And instead of calling it Big Sean, of course, it was Big John in his campaign. So let's take a quick look at both. Keep our families free. Stop China from grabbing Kansas land. Help President Trump make his stand. Fight the rhinos until they're gone. Nobody better mess with Big Sean. The Senate wasn't ready, said pay your dues. That John said, sit down, friend, I got some big news. You see, I'm from Texas, where we do things quick. And the way this place is run is about to make me sick. Big John. So they look pretty similar, right? Were you inspired by John Cornyn's ad at all? I uh, had never, actually, if I'd heard of John Cornyn before that article came out just a day or two ago, uh, I had forgotten about him. I mean, that ad ran in Texas. I don't know why I would have ever seen that ad. Uh, Parody is not uh, plagiarism. And that song has been around for decades. And uh, frankly, we came up with that just because Uh, I am a cowboy and this is what I do every day and uh, that's kind of a cowboy song and I'm a big guy I'm six foot four I'm even taller than that if I'm wearing cowboy boots and like I like I always do and so uh, Big Sean just fit and once again people are resonating with that message as well but you have to admit after seeing the ad it is pretty similar to what you were saying Big John, Big Sean similar from the the standpoint that uh, it's the same song I guess we're both from the Western background uh, but like I said, I'd never heard of John Cornyn until a couple of days ago when that article was written. And uh, I would say, if anything, we made it more our own. Uh, the music in the background of his ad is very, very much like uh, the original author, uh, 
is it Jimmy Dean? Yeah, Jimmy Dean sang it, I think, the first time, or the original. And uh, we completely, it's, it's a totally different voice um, and just really different background altogether. Okay. Now you're a cattle rancher, former president of the Kansas Livestock yes, Association. So what inspired you to run for Congress? You know, I have been uh, feeling for some time now that what we've been getting out of D.C. or really all of uh, our representation is, is not what we deserve uh, as a state, as voters, as citizens. Uh, you know, I don't think the original intent of our founding fathers was for career politicians to go to Washington, D.C. and spend a lifetime there. Uh, I believe that strong Christian conservatives, uh, preferably with a business background that have actually, you know, taken risks, worked out in industry, know what it's like to be an everyday Kansan, uh, need to step up and engage. Uh, because what we've been getting out of D.C. is not working. and. So continuing to send career politicians and expecting to get a different result uh, is pretty foolish. And so I decided to throw my hat in the ring and, and win this fight. Now, based on the ads we've seen running as well, I'd imagine that gender transitioning for minors is one of the issues that you're advocating against if you were to get to D.C. So we now have the Supreme Court taking up a case where they'll determine whether state bans are constitutional. Kansas, not really close to having that ban in place. They were close this year. Correct. But um, what are your thoughts on the upcoming hearing from SCOTUS? And then what type of legislation would you be pushing for if you get to Congress? Well, on this particular issue, uh, we've got to protect our children. You know, we have a myriad of laws that are already in place to protect minors. And this is a life altering decision. I mean, in many cases, uh, you know, permanent sterilization is a part of it. Uh, these are decisions that, you know, early teenagers, uh, pre-adolescents, they, they just don't have the capacity to make these magnitude of decisions. I, I have five of my own children. Uh, my oldest is 17, my youngest is eight, and you know, they're incredibly intelligent, but they're not at a position in life to make a decision such as that. I mean, you can't even get a tattoo as a minor without parental consent. I don't know why we would ever allow some of these things to happen. Okay. Um would you advocate for then maybe a blanket ban on the federal level of gender transitioning for minors? Absolutely. Yeah, I would be totally in favor for uh, a, a federal ban for anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, under 18 years old uh, to go through uh, these gender reassignment surgeries, puberty blockers. It's irresponsible on behalf of the, the medical community. Uh, I believe the doctors that perform these should be uh, open to malpractice lawsuit at any point in their career. If, if a child was to, to go through one of these surgeries and at 30 years of age uh, realize the mistake that they had made, they should be able to go hold those doctors accountable. Well, usually, isn't it more conservative then to lean more for states having the um, ability to implement their own laws, having that local decision making? You know, I wouldn't be opposed to a state level ban either. I am a big states rights guy. I believe that states have the ability to make their own decisions as well. Uh, but when it comes to the, the case of our children, uh, that's something that we should protect our children nationwide. Okay, so you would advocate for a federal ban in that case? Absolutely, I would. Okay. Well, former President Trump, now convicted of a crime, is the presumptive Republican nominee. So one that you appear to support, does that stand even with his conviction? Oh, absolutely. This was a witch hunt, uh, lawfare. They're going after him. Uh, there's, there's no identified victim. Uh, the judge in this case gave bogus and frankly illegal instructions to the jury. Uh, you know, this is just another attack of the left against President Donald Trump. Uh, because they hate him so much. And he's been great for our country. Our economy was better. We were energy independent. Uh, I don't think anybody would argue that their dollar went further under President Trump. And the fact is, Americans and Kansans are worse off today than they were four years ago. So you don't think what the jury found in that case was valid, 34 counts that he was guilty on? I, I listen, I wasn't in the courtroom, but I think 
there's widespread agreement that this was literally using our judicial system to attack a former president of the United States. It's unprecedented, it's historical, and frankly, it's, uh, it, it's just not legit. All right, more to come from the interview, including this. I am absolutely a true conservative. Many candidates calling themselves the true conservative in this race. But what does that mean? Where Sean Tiffany stands? That's coming up. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. Topeka ER and Hospital is proud to help bring you a 27 News series, recognizing local women who are making a positive impact in our communities. Watch Everything Woman on 27 News, sponsored by Sharp Honda, Topeka ER and Hospital, and Washburn University. Minority entrepreneurs create jobs and contribute to the cultural and social fabric of our society. Please visit these minority-owned businesses, Tender Loving Care, 785 Kitchen, and Essentia. If you love KU and K-State sports, you'll love K-Nation. Go to our K-Nation Facebook page and add to the conversation on all the news surrounding the Jayhawks and Wildcats. Join us on Facebook today. Join us for the 35th annual Sunflower State Games, the largest amateur multi-sport competition in Kansas. Watch athletes of all ages, skills, and physical abilities compete in more than 25 different events. For more information about the Sunflower State Games, visit sunflowergames.com. The Olympic Games are coming. But first, the best American athletes have to make Team USA. The U.S. Olympic Team Trials on NBC and Peacock. is insane. I've never seen anything like this. Thank you. I never have done this before. I'm a little scared. We have a medic on standby. What's happening? AGT, Tuesday on NBC and Peacock. There's so many reasons to watch Kelly. I can't even focus on what you're talking about right now. <laughs> It's all on the Kelly Clarkson Show. Count me in. Weekdays. Weekdays at 3 on 27 KSNT. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. Next up in our talk with Sean Tiffany, a candidate for Congressional District 2, I asked about what it means to be conservative and does he stand by those principles in all cases? Also, what issues does he plan to tackle in D.C.? Take a look. Would you call yourself a true conservative, and what does that mean to you? I am absolutely a true conservative. Um, you know, I'm the type of guy that is going to go to Washington, D.C. and be beholden to two things. First and foremost, my God, and secondly, the voters in the district of, of Kansas Congressional District 2. Okay, so you would equate conservative values with being religious? Uh, having a standard that guides morality, uh, that guides uh, life, yeah. I think most conservatives d would agree that uh, a Christian background, a Christian faith uh, is a guidepost. Okay. So let's talk about what it means to be conservative a little bit because we see this also come up a lot, you know, where a lot of people are yeah. like, I'm the true conservative in this way. Sure. So because you would also think that includes things like individual freedom, limited government, but then in some cases when it comes to issues like gender transitioning or LGBTQ issues, that doesn't seem to be applied there. So would you say that it would seem like for particular issues, it's okay for the government to interfere? I don't think that's fair at all. No? Uh, you know, I am fiscally conservative. I think we should have limited taxes, uh, limited government regulation at the federal level. Uh, states can regulate better at the state level. Uh, I think you're, you're trying to pick apart one uh, topic with uh, the transgender or the LGBTQ. Uh, and really, so some of my opponents or, or the folks on the left that have uh, thrown some criticism against that issue, uh, they're not listening to the messaging. The messaging in that commercial was, I want to protect minors from making life-altering and body-altering decisions and keep boys out of our sports or our girls' of sports. I have three daughters. They should not have to worry about competing against boys in, uh, or biological males in their sports. Uh, they've worked too hard uh, to have 
gender-defined spaces for young women to compete in. And so if people would really sit back and listen to that ad, instead of throwing their own slant on it, they would realize that ultimately I'm just trying to protect children. And in some cases then you would say that the government is okay to interfere, like in something like that? When it comes to the case of protecting children, absolutely. Okay. Uh, why are, what are some of the top issues that you would say you're advocating for on your campaign? Well, uh, the biggest issue as I travel the district is our southern border. Uh, I, I've actually been to our border a couple weeks ago. I've developed a border plan. Uh, we have got to build the wall. We have got to deport illegal aliens. We have to stand, you know, President Donald Trump is going to need fighters that are going to stand next to him in Washington, D.C. and, you know, fight this fight and secure our nation. The fact of the matter is Joe Biden cares more about the sovereignty and the security of Ukraine than he does our own country. Uh, with the money that we've sent to Ukraine, we could have built the border in Texas many times over. Uh, when I was in Texas, I met with sheriffs and border patrol agents that are not being supported, uh, border patrol agents that are not being supported at the federal level, uh, you know, sheriffs that are having to deal with the crime and the death and the horrible things uh, that are going on as these people move through their counties. Uh, it's a national security issue and it's a humanitarian crisis. And what I witnessed on the border uh, the media is not even beginning to tell the, the magnitude of that story. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is just wasteful government spending. Uh, we have $34 trillion of debt. As a businessman, I realize if I operated my business the way the federal government is operating today, I would I wouldn't even be in business. I'd have been broke many, many years ago. And so we have to have a federally balanced budget amendment. Uh, we cannot continue to spend more than we take in. And we have to put America first. We have got to defend ourselves before we continue to ship money over to Europe. It's time that the European Union and NATO step up and fight their own wars. And, you know, Americans know that their dollar just doesn't go as far today. I mean, groceries are more expensive, fuel is more expensive. Uh, inflation has made every thing that we purchase in our daily lives more expensive than they were four years ago, and that's hurting Americans. We have to get Trump's tax cuts extended and made permanent. Uh, I would argue that we could make them even, even more robust and allow Kansans to keep more of what they make. On issues like the border, do you mm -hmm. see yourself working across the aisle to reach a compromise? Because compromise takes give and take, and we Correct. did see maybe some possible compromise that could have happened um, earlier this year when Congress was talking a little bit about, you know, here's what mm -hmm. you know the president wants, here's what we want, but some not willing to budge on what they wanted. So, would you reach a compromise and maybe have that level of give and take when it comes to issues like the border? Well, ultimately, all of life. Uh, regardless of profession is about relationships and uh, working with people that might have slightly different opinions in order to, to make meaningful change. Uh, I really don't understand where our national security would require compromise. I mean, it, it's pretty cut and dry. Nations have boundaries, they, sovereign nations have borders, and uh, there's not another border between two nations in the country that is as porous as ours is with Mexico to the south. And so uh, that, it, that the notion of compromising on our, our national security it seems silly to me. Well, not compromising in that way, but give and take. So if they wanted aid for Ukraine and you wanted money for more security at the border, mm -hmm. what would the compromise be in that case? Well, you know, that's speculation, but obviously those conversations need to be had. And then when I get to Washington, D.C., uh, I'm going to weigh every one of those options and, and make the best decision for Kansans. All right, an update in the District 2 race when we return. Why one Democrat is taking heat. We'll be right back. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. Ladyfingers Automotive, family-owned auto repair with hands that understand your vehicle. Quality repairs done at an affordable cost. When you're in need of service, repair, or towing, remember Ladyfingers Automotive. 
Air not blowing, pipes not flowing, bulbs not glowing? Blue Dot Heating, Plumbing, and Electrical can fix it all. Our experts are at your service 24-7. After 65 years, we are proud to be the only 24-7 emergency provider for HVAC, electrical, and plumbing in Topeka. We offer several 0% interest options or even extended terms with low monthly payments. We have plans to fit your needs and your budget. So call Blue Dot, one call for all your home comfort needs at 785-272-1633. Have a cute kid? Sign up today at ksnt.com and we may feature them in the news. Watch 27 News weekday mornings to see if we feature your kid. Cute Kid of the Day is sponsored by Bonkers and Sunset Zoo. Every child deserves to live their best life. And you can help give kids with cancer that chance when you reserve a ticket for the St. Jude Dream Home Giveaway. Reserve your ticket now and help today's patients become tomorrow's survivors. Next Live with Kelly and Mark, Mark Feuerstein. Plus, we kick off festive fourth week with TikTok star Shannon Doherty. Monday at 11 on 27 KSNT. Hey, baby. Am I just supposed to eat my bagel like you're not going to go Jessica Jones on Bad Guys? No. You're supposed to offer me now that I have that bagel. I am your mother. I've done what I can to keep this country safe. And it is my job to keep you safe. This is what I do now. Get down! Sundays at 11 on 27 KSNT. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. We just heard from Sean Tiffany earlier, and like we said, he's getting accused of plagiarizing one of his ads. Before we move on to our other updates in the District 2 race, we have Bob Beatty, political analyst Bob Beatty, in to weigh in. And Bob, that Big Sean ad is pretty similar to Big John from Senator John Cornyn in 2008, but could it really be considered plagiarizing, or is that taking it a tad too far? No, in political ads, we don't call it plagiarizing. It's an homage. Uh, it's very common common in political ads to see themes or, or things like this that are very similar. I did want to comment on his first ad because uh, in your really excellent interview, uh, he said people weren't getting the message I'm trying to protect kids. But he also talked about how he made the ad partially just to shock people, using the word castration. So he wants it both ways. He wants to shock people with a shocking word about the very delicate and uh, complicated subject of uh, you know, gender affirming care, but then he wants people to understand really the intricacies of what he's talking about. But I do think, yes, uh, the main point of that ad was to shock people. All right. Now, also new this morning, Nancy Boyda, a Democrat for District 2, is being accused of going against her party on her latest stance, where she's coming out as against transgender girls participating in girls' sports. It's drawing blowback, of course. Young Democrats not too happy about this, Bob. Yeah, you know, I, I saw that, and I, I think in this case, Nancy Boyda is, is just honestly believes what she's saying. I don't think she's necessarily trying to position herself for a general election uh, because uh, polls do show, surveys show that actually uh, the last ones we've seen that a majority of Can majority of Kansans are sort of concerned about this issue. Now Republicans have thought this means it's a winning issue sometimes in politics, but what it really means is that it's complicated and that it's okay for Republicans and Democrats and, and people in the middle to have nuanced uh, positions on this issue. And how do you think this is going to impact her in the race? Because you did have, I think it was Kansas Young Democrats coming out with a statement talking about her stance. Yeah, you know, uh, when the old second district, before it was changed, this might have hurt her a lot more. It's now been changed to be a little bit more Republican or even conservative, you might say, more rural areas in, in the second district. So I, I don't think it'll have the, as big an impact as some people might think. All right, Bob, thank sure. you so much. Another ad now making waves in this race, presumptive Republican frontrunner Derek Schmidt releasing his first ad. We'll have a look at that after the break. You're watching Inside Kansas Politics. Blind tiger, always brewing up something great. That growl means passion in your glass. And a whole lot of love on your plate. Blind Tiger, always brewing up something great. Blind Tiger Brewery and Restaurant, 37th in Kansas. Car accident? You might think it's best to wait and see before calling a lawyer. But don't do it. Wait and see can turn into wait and lose. Once the insurance company thinks you're desperate for money, they may offer you less than you really deserve. 
a lot less. At Devon James, we don't believe in wait and see. We believe in fight and win. Call us now, and we'll fight for every dollar you deserve. Devon James wins. Call 888-8888. Craving something different and delicious? Check out the area's food trucks at Tasty Trucks. With fresh ingredients, unique recipes, and a dash of local love. Menus and locations are at your fingertips at ksnt.com slash tasty trucks or the 27 News mobile app. Start your Friday with a donut. Fox 43 AM Live and Circle Coffee Company are giving away donuts every week to a lucky business. We'll draw a winner on Wednesday and deliver the treats on Friday. Sign up your business today for a chance to win. Sponsored by Circle Coffee Company. The Olympic Games are coming. But first, the best American athletes have to make Team USA. The U.S. Olympic Team Trials on NBC and Peacock. It's insane. I've never seen anything like this. Thank you. I never have done this before. I'm a little scared. We have a medic on standby. What's happening? AGT, Tuesday on NBC and Peacock. Welcome back to Inside Kansas Politics. I'm Rebecca Chung. Republican candidate for Congress Derek Schmidt, who started off with a strong lead in the race for District 2, has now released his first ad. Here's a quick look. This old truck's seen a lot, from Grandpa's sheet metal shop to my lawn business growing up. But to keep her running, you can't be afraid to get your hands dirty. As your attorney general, I tackled the tough jobs head on. I'm Derek Schmidt, and I approve this message because it's time for a conservative fighter in Congress to get America running again. All right, Bob, these ads all about setting yourself apart from your other opponents in the race. But what message is Derek Schmidt sending with this ad? So uh, Derek Schmidt ran for governor, we know, just a couple years ago. And his first ad in the governor's race featured him driving a truck, a newer truck. So, But that truck theme continues. And, and the reason I point that out is really this congressional campaign is just almost a through line from his governor's race. The name recognition he got from that in, those, in many of the ads in the governor's race, he was uh, dressed more informally. Remember, he was attorney general, which is a lawyer. You're always in suits. Well, you know, not in this case, not in this ad, not in many of the ads for the governor. He, governor race. He's trying to position himself not as a career politician, but as an ordinary guy. Actually, extraordinary because I can't fix trucks. So you know, looks like he's repairing <laughs> the truck. Uh, he's talked about being a farmer on his Facebook and other places. So he's trying to get away from that idea of being an establishment politician, even though he's been in politics for many years. Basically trying to say, you know, I'm one of you. I'm a, I'm a Kansan too. I live and, you know, am someone who has been here in Kansas for a long time. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we, Sean Tiffany is a, is a cattleman, a, cow, a self-described cowboy. So he's really, uh, Derek Schmidt is trying to make sure he says, yes, I'm one of you to the, the rural swath of uh, the second district uh, and get away again from this idea again that he was attorney general, which is a person that spends a lot of time in courtrooms and in, in meetings wearing a suit uh, versus what we saw in that commercial. And you know, I think he did a good job of it in that first commercial. Okay, gonna have to see what other ads we have coming out this election season. Yeah, that's an intro ad from a man in Kansas politics who needs no real introduction. Bob, thank you so much. <laughs> sure. And that was your look inside Kansas politics. We'll see you next Sunday right here on 27 KSNT at 10.30 a.m. Have a good day.